curious what the steps are after a fire or flood stick around as we get into that in the question of the day what's going on guys matt in the hat matt johnson real estate powered by keller williams diamond partners you are tuned in to the hot list i come to you on monday through friday each and every week around 12 o'clock central standard time we hang out and talk real estate we talk properties new to the market with recent price reductions or something unique about the property that I want to share with y'all and want you all to know. I also answer a question of the day that is submitted by a listener of the podcast. And to find out how you get your question answered and on air, just hang out with me for a few minutes. And finally, I recognize and thank a sponsor of the week, week each and every week. This week is no exception. And if you would like more information on how you could be a sponsor of the week, supporter of the hot list, then you just got to stick around with me till the end. So as you guys know, hopefully by now that uh, it is December and it is that time of year when I break out my my normal, I change from my normal ball cap to my, uh, my Christmas hats. My wife says that I have a few too many but is is 12 really too many? I don't think it is. Uh, hopefully you don't think it is either. So let me know what y'all think about my my Santa hats. So I'm just going to jump right into it with the house that we're talking about today. Not only is it a newly listed property, it is a very unique property as well. The address is 1734 Road B2 right here in Emporia. It's a four bed, one bath house has 1,929 square feet of finished space, currently listed for 350,000 courtesy of Eck Real Estate. So what makes this property unique? Uh, is it the house? Somewhat the house. Is it the acreage? Possibly. Is it that it has an eight acre pond that's 30 feet deep? Definitely, maybe. So this house is a one and a half story farmhouse, uh, sits on 24 acres and like I mentioned, it does have an eight acre pond that goes that's 30 feet deep at the deepest point. Plus, they hauled in a number of semi loads of sand. So they created your own personal sand beach on your own private pond. How badass is that? Uh, in the house itself, they They've updated the septic tank, the heat pump, the AC, the kitchen appliances. Uh, they've replaced the windows, uh, refinished the, the floors recently. So they've done a ton of work to the house. Uh, there's also a two-car detached garage that's 26 by 30. So not just a garage, but shop area as well. I did forget to mention with the pond, it does have its own boat ramp. And it is stocked with bass, crappie, and catfish. So if you're outdoorsman, fisherman, this could be the place for you. You want some want some room to run around ATV, UTV, whatever the case may be, then this could be the place for you. All you got to do is click on the link in the description, take you right to my website so you can see the house for yourself. Check out some of the pictures. Absolutely phenomenal. You will not be disappointed. If you are pre-approved, want to schedule a showing for this house, all you got to do, reach out to me. I would be happy to schedule a showing for those that are pre-approved. Uh, for any other questions, please let me know. I would be happy to answer what I can about the property. Before moving on <clears throat> to the question of the day, I do want to recognize and thank our sponsor of the week this week, and that is Britain Family Chiropractic. I've talked... Uh, a number of times this week about what Dr. Jacob and Dr. Lisa do. I can't say enough about what they do. They are in incredible people, uh, have an incredible business. And I also learned this week on top of the, the acupuncture and the Chinese fire cupping, they also, they also help with women, women specific issues like hot flashes, menopause, and in infertility. Um, and that is combined with some of the, the acupuncture uh, as well. I 
don't know enough about that. So that's all I'm going to mention about that. If you have questions, all you got to do is call schedule your appointment with Dr. Lisa at 620-208-7550. Or you can just click on the link in the description, take you right to their Facebook page, and you can get additional information, address, email. And I do want to add one, one other quick note. If you're unsure what to get somebody that has some normal aches, pains, uh, right now Britain Chiropractic is and does have gift vouchers, gift certificates available. So if you've thought about getting somebody some adjusting or maybe some type of acupuncture, this could be a perfect gift for for you to give to them and they can do they can schedule their appointment and see what what they can get done. So all you got to do is just click on that link in the description. It'll take you to their Facebook page and you can get additional information right then and there. If you're interested in being a sponsor of the week and supporting the hot list, all you got to do is shoot me a message wherever you're listening to this. I would be happy to have a conversation with you, see if we are a good fit for pairing up and making you a sponsor of the week. And that brings us to the best part, my favorite part of the show, and that is the question of the day. The question of the day is submitted by a listener of the podcast Monday through Friday, each and every week for over a year now. You've been submitting your questions to me, and I do my best to answer answer what I can and do some research as well. Uh, question today, I did have to do some, some research on. Uh, And it was actually brought up because of the topic we talked about yesterday, which was, you know, cleaning, cleaning the fireplace flue. So question of the day, you brought up potential fire because of a fireplace, not, not cleaning it. What happens after a fire or a flood? Uh, And I'm, I'm glad that somebody brought this question up. I have personally not been through either one. I've been through tornado. I've been through hurricane. Uh, So for this particular one, I wasn't able to speak from personal experience. I've reached out to people, insurance agents, uh, people I know, and then just some general research. To say the least, whether it's fire, flood, excuse me, or other type of disaster, the the end result and what happens can be absolutely devastating and can truly be emotional. Again, not having been through it, I can't even imagine the amount of motion, emotion that is accompanied by this. Just seeing everything that that you that you own. God forbid anything happen to one of your family members in an event like this. No doubt that it's going to be a huge job to go through recovery after some type of disaster. So after, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a fire, flood, or disaster, restoring your home can be a huge undertaking and is not to be taken lightly. Just the task itself upon looking at what is left of of your home from again from what i've been told is just so overwhelming and the task just seems so daunting like it's never going to never going to happen and never going to be the same hopefully things aren't as bad as they appear for for your sake for your family's sake so whether you're going through this or you just want to be prepared for worst case scenario Today, we're going to talk about five basic home restorations after a fire or flood. So number one, be prepared for a shock. I've mentioned this a couple times already. So no matter what the disaster, fire, flood, whatever whatever other type of disaster, going back into your home for the first time is going to be emotional overload. Uh, Everything about it is just going to shock you. You're going to be in a state of shock and emotion, and it can be overwhelming. Even if the actual damage is minimal, 
your personal items, maybe your, your, your furniture, you have some family heirlooms or keepsakes, may be scattered or even damaged. And let's not forget, let's not forget the smells, especially, you know, fire, flood. These can be overwhelming on their own because they're going to be very strong. You may have, with the fire, you may have a combination of wood, of smoldering or, or smoke. With the flood, you can look at having some type of mold, mildew smell to it. And this only adds to your emotion or this may be what triggers your emotion to begin. So you got to be careful with this and just know it is going to be emotional. I would recommend not getting to work right away. Just from the people that I've spoke with, they all advise that it's to take time necessary and needed to accept what has happened and what you're what you're seeing. You need to give yourself time to calm calm down after that initial rush of emotion, kind of comprehend what it is that happened and what you're looking at. And that takes us right into number two, which is talking with your insurance company. Before trying to clear out your home or even begin repairs, you have to speak with your insurance company. You need to find out what the process is to make make a claim. Take pictures. Don't just rely on the claim adjuster to take pictures because your insurance company is going to send somebody out to take their own set of pictures. You need to take pictures and document as well. Take some additional pictures. Just keep them for your own records. And that way, if there's something, you know, hopefully they get it all. Don't leave something out. But if there's something that doesn't look right or maybe for, have forgotten, you have your own pictures to reference and bring up. Also, avoid moving items if possible, because you want to leave everything as as best you can where where it's at so they can see the extent of the damage, because you want your pictures to show the home as it is in that current condition. Talking with your insurance company is not only going to get the ball rolling on your claim, this is go also going to help you figure out what type of coverage limitations you have or you, you may run into. This could also aid you in deciding exactly how to approach the restoration process. So that's absolutely key as well. Number three is dealing with water. It doesn't matter if it's from a flood or fire hoses, water in your house it equals bad news bears. <clears throat> Hopefully y'all are old enough to remember that movie. The original one, with Walter Matthau, not the new one, with Billy Bob Thornton, just like most original, much better. Just side note there. And this is bad news because water can warp or do other types of damage to wood and other materials. This also creates an environment for bacteria, mold, and mildew. Usually there are some type of pumps that are going to be needed to remove standing water, especially if you have a basement or crawl space. So you can put a pump in there and uh, start moving that water out as, as best you can. Then on afterwards, you're going to need some type of dehumidifier in the rooms that have water damage to help reduce the that mold, mildewy smell. If you have ceilings or walls that have that have had some severe water damage, you may need to bring in some additional support structures and put those in place. Hopefully the damage isn't to that extent, but you never know. So you, you want to make sure because you got to be careful when you're walking through and don't want to enter until first responders give, give the go ahead and the all clear to start walking through. Uh, with those additional supports that may need to be brought in, that's going to keep your ceilings as well as your walls from collapsing or even buckling on themselves. And of course, you don't want to add insult to injury. So the electrical is 
typically still going to be on unless somebody's cut it somewhere somewhere else so to avoid potential electric shock i don't know about you i've been shocked plenty of times i've been hit with 110 2 220 and 4 480 uh thankfully the 480 blew me back into a wall so shut off the main breaker until all the water is gone call an electrician or a professional to confirm that the wiring isn't damaged have them cut power to the property to just to help avoid any type of electric shock or electrocution that may occur number four is repair and replace so maybe the damage is contained to a single room or a smaller area that would be not best case scenario obviously but that would be better than the entire home you might be able to get away with just some basic repairs without any type of major restoration or construction however keep in mind if you have heavy water damage or a large number of the rooms in your house are affected generally you're going to have to replace any type of water damaged wood or other support structures because if that damage is substantial enough, major construction is going to be required and reduce some of those rooms. So you want to reduce the chance of, of bacteria, mold, mildew, uh, rot, any type of any type of potential issues that could come back around to haunt you. So don't skimp when it comes to repairing or redoing, because even if things are not don't seem that bad. Like I just mentioned with wood or other materials that are affected by mold, mildew, maybe even rot, these can lead to failure in the future and then require even more costly repairs on top of what you just repaired. And that brings us finally to number five, which is check the outside. Till now, we've really focused on the interior. What about the exterior of your home? You need to check for external damage uh, because, like I mentioned in the previous one, if you ignore it or don't come across it, it might set you up for failure in the future and cause you more, more costly setbacks and more just more costly repairs. If you have damage to your roof, your siding, maybe even brick, this could lead to further water damage or ongoing issues over over time and then you're going to have to look at replacing all of that as well so when you're doing a thorough inspection of the exterior this should help reveal any potential issues hopefully you can find those locate those before they turn into major problems so that's that's the the top five basic home rest, restoration you've got Again, number one, be prepared for the shock because it is going to be an emotional event because this isn't just a house. This is your home. This is the roof over your head where you've raised your your kids. You know, you got married. It's going to be an emotional event. Just keep that keep that in mind and make sure that you have somebody to to lean on. Number two, talk with your insurance company. They're going to take pictures. I still recommend from the people I've spoke with, take your own pictures as well. That way, in case something is missed, then you have documentation. Avoid moving things as well because the insurance company wants to see your house as it is in its current condition. Number three, dealing with water, whether it's a flood or fire hoses, water is bad news for a home. You need to get it pumped out. Uh, check the structural integrity and may need to bring in some additional supports as well as get somebody out there, some type of electrician to get the power shut off and reduce the chance of electrocution. Number four was repair and replace, whether it is one room or a large number of rooms in your house, uh, anything that's been damaged from fire, electrical water needs to be pulled out removed you don't want to just skimp on this and leave 
some materials that could potentially lead to mold, mildew, or even susceptible to rot down the future, in, down the road. And finally, you need to check the outside because if you don't find something or ignore the outside of your house, like your, your roof, your siding, if you have brick, ignoring these issues could lead to leaks or a more extensive damage in, in the future. And when you're going through this, there's going to be a lot of work, requ work required during this restoration project. For some of us, you know, some of us DIYers, it can be, it can be done. Uh, if on the other side of that, because it's emotional, you may not be able to, or you may not want to continue to do it on your own. There's no shame in calling in a professional for help or advice. This is what they do. There's a lot of professionals that specialize in restorations from, from fire or flood. They know exactly what they're doing and they know how to work with insurance companies to get these repairs done effectively and in a timely manner. So that's that's it. That's what I got for you guys today in the hot list. So thanks for watching with Matt in a hat. Matt Johnson Real Estate powered by Keller Williams Diamond Partners. I do this because your experience matters and should be trusted with a veteran. You guys have an awesome day. I'll see you back in here for Red Friday tomorrow and a new Santa hat. Take care.